Hello, King Heathen, the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsychologist, technical agnostic, and Fortean skeptic. Um, yeah, I agree with, uh, like I said, I agree with the, uh, uh, with you and the, um, you know, about that eventually the guy will probably see the light and convert to atheism. Um, I myself, just purely out of uh, interest, have remained an agnostic. Um, actually, have remained an agnostic for quite a number of years now. The major reason that I have done that is because of the fact that, um, uh, well, largely because, well, largely because of the fact that I've been taking a look at some of the, uh, again, I, I read, friend, I read uh, a large chunk of what goes on in theoretical physics, just purely out of interest's sake, you know, just, just to keep up with the, friend, with, the uh, with the cutting edge of science. What's funny, though, is the fact that there's actually been a couple of possible candidates, which, and this is what's funny, and, and, and this is why I, I stay as an agnostic, is that, you know, in truth, we'll probably never have enough info to ever really know whether we had a god or not. And by God, I want to make something perfectly clear. I don't believe in the Christian God. I am with Albert Einstein on this one. The um, the God as described by the Bible is a childish... Um, oh, God, what did he say in his final letter? I'm just trying to remember now. I believe it was a childish primitive... Um, uh, you know, a childish primitive attempt to explain the world was what his exact words were. I'm paraphrasing here a little bit. Um... You know, I'm much more along, uh, with him along the lines of Spinoza's God, which is the concept of a, uh, 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 you know, a, a, a personification, if you will, of the uh, natural laws that govern our universe, almost sort of like the, the religious awe that uh, Hawking and Einstein felt, you know, about the wonder of our universe. Now, at the same time, however, um, there has been some interesting developments in physics lately, which I wouldn't say are proof of a God, but I would say do kind of put us in the position of, you know, we'll never really know for certain. And that's what bugs the, you know, and it doesn't really bug the crap out of me, but, you know, um, I guess I've decided that, you know, I don't really decide whether I believe or disbelieve, um, largely because of the fact that the whole issue of religion to me is one of, I don't really care. If there is an afterlife, I'll know. You know, I'll know when I die. It's the, you know, um, it's... Now, of course, I'm still open to all new information, but, you know, that's the way it goes. Anyway, the, um, I, I'm doing this video as a response to yours because I had promised somebody else I was going to do a better explanation of M-theory, um, which is um, uh, better known as membrane theory. Um, one of the most recent developments, um, this is the successor to string theory, and which is the well, prom which is now prominently the major candidate for the theory of everything, has um, actually uh, a couple of scientists who are working with it have actually postulated that there is a um, chance of a possibility of that there is a chance that it could be possible for somebody to physically create a universe, um, you know, by um, basically by causing um, membranes to, you know, bump together, what have you, uh, much like it would already happen naturally. But anyway, the point is that because of this mathematical um, uh, example showing that this is possible, um, if M theory actually ever did get proven um, by the new Large Hadron Collider, which is currently going on, this might allow for a 50-50 possibility that somebody created our universe as a science experiment, you know, with advanced technology, and then left it to, uh, um, uh, you know, left it to uh, to run free and its, uh, you know, and develop of its own accord. Hence, evolution and all the other laws. You know, we'd, uh, uh, this would be a, la a deist god. You know, somebody like Martin Gardner, a fellow uh, mega skeptic, would, um, you know, a fellow skeptic would believe in. You know, uh, like I said, a deist. That would, uh, this might allow for, uh, uh, you know, a 50% chance of a deist probability, but it would also equal for a 50% chance that we were, um, how shall we say, uh, formed naturally by a couple of membrane universes bouncing together. The only way we'd ever know is, um, uh, wouldn't be for several thousand to million more years yet until we were able to develop technology to uh, cross the 11th dimension and uh, find out if, uh, you know, and then see if, uh, you know, send a message across the 11th dimension and see if anybody else uh, responds back taking credit for having created our universe and then uh, physically demonstrating um, how they did it. Point being, um, you know, if this probability, if M theory ever does get proven, it would mean a 50-50 probability that wouldn't get answered for another several million years yet. May, if ever. So, you know, I mean, by then the civilization, if one had created us, could have been long dead. So, my point being is that we would never actually, uh, we would never know. Um, if M theory is correct, it's about a 50-50 shot one way or the other. And I'm not going to pick either one. Because truth be told, I really don't care. It, um, you know, uh, under that concept, you know, uh, under that concept of a creator, um, you know, <laughs> there, uh, there really isn't much way one way or the other to take a look. You know, you might as well say uh, say atheism, but you could equally say theism. Um, uh, you know, under the deist perspective, and be you know, and have an equal shot at being right. Um, as an agnostic, uh, I don't know, nor do I care. 
Um, I'm a militant agnostic. I don't know. Neither do you. Um, we, uh, you know, the evidence, um, you know, uh, for evolu you know, for the for the God is described by religion. I can say that we, uh, I, you know, in terms of Christianity or the like, I can say I think I can say with pretty with pretty good certainty that we can disregard that God. So in terms of that God, I'm an atheist. But in terms of the uh, concept of a creator, you know, like just a creator period um, of any sort, well, then I'm an agnostic. And at that point, I'm going to have to, uh, you know, and at that point, I'm going to have to uh, remain an agnostic, probably for the rest of my days. You know, and the same goes with, um, uh, as Michael Shermer said in his uh, debate with Deepak Chopra, um, again, um, uh, a militant agnostic once said to me, I don't know and neither do you. That is the position we should be taking on an afterlife. And I'm going to do just that. You know, if there's an afterlife, great. I continue on in some form for, you know, with consciousness for several, you know, possibly for several million more years yet. If not, well, that's that. Either way, I have to learn, uh, you know, I have to focus on the uh, on the here and now, and I still have to learn as much as I possibly can because the under that 50-50 possibility, you know, the odds are too high um, for me not to attempt to do my best to help humanity preserve itself for another, well, for as long as I possibly can. So, you know, for me for me to do my little bit to help uh, to help the human race survive. So, that's um, that's just my thoughts on it. Take it for what you will. And um, so, yeah, from an agnostic to an atheist, keep up the good fight for reason and intellectual. Oh, and a side note. Um, before I forget, this was um, this was one thing I just wanted to mention. Um, I I put this in practically all my videos, um, but uh, you know, I've had to I've had to repeat this over and over again. Um, when calling people idiots who are religious or the like, um, I try to this again. Maybe you have a different reason for doing it, and maybe you have a way of doing it so this way it doesn't come across as an ad hominem attack. But um, this is just a matter of personal. Um, this is just a matter of personal uh, preference. I try to avoid calling people of a religious uh, persuasion idiots. Uh, I may call them ignorant uh, purely because of the fact they may lack the information to uh, make a logical assessment. But I don't call them idiots uh, largely because of the fact that um, you know it is physically possible that they've just simply allocated their intelligence elsewhere and have been unable to apply it to the same issue. Um, purely because of the fact they may not have the, uh, the, la the background the, or the information or anything else to allow themselves to infer, you know, to, um, you know, to, get, uh, to wean themselves off religion. So that having been said, um, you know, like I said, um, you know, based on that, I generally try to avoid that. Just uh, purely for a, um, you know, just, just purely as a matter of personal preference. Um, other than that, your videos look good, so keep it up. Oh, and uh, there was one other thing. Um, I can't remember the name of the guy now. Um, I've I'm going to be posting another video in response to him. But uh, keep track for the pre uh, for the video response I'm going to do next to, to another guy's video because there's a really cool uh, introduction to Bayesian statistics uh, uh, to Bayesian statistics and probability I came across for DNA evidence, which I think you'll really enjoy. Um, the, just purely as a, rec as a as a letter of recommendation, um, you know, um, yeah, like I said, just keep track for the response and just find the video which I'm responding to for that one. So yeah, um, hope you enjoy. Um, this is the practitioner signing off. Um, like I said, I enjoyed your videos and uh, keep up the good work. And uh, remember, I don't know, neither do you. But hey, it doesn't really matter one way or the other. Who knows and who the hell cares? <laughs> See ya!